Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. This is the word of the Lord. If you have a Bible, it would be great if you had it open. Um, uh, that uh, passage from Hebrews, chapter 12, page 1,210, uh, if you've got one of the church Bibles. Uh, if you haven't, it's sort of towards the back. <laughs> uh, Hebrews, chapter 12. It's our second reading, and as you may have guessed uh, from the way it begins with the word therefore, it sort of dives into the middle of something. Uh, this isn't a standalone few verses. The first word is therefore. You see, the writer had just listed uh, in chapter 11 a whole load of people from the Bible who had shown what it means to live by faith. Uh, in verse 7, we have Noah, um, who built an ark to save his family. In verse 29, we have Moses, who led the people of, of Israel through the Red Sea to safety from slavery. Amazing stuff. But others faced imprisonment, we find, in verse 36. In verse 37, others uh, were stoned to death, and so on. So it means that, obviously, that living by faith is something not quite the same as being successful or wealthy or talented. Uh, these people in chapter 11 showed that living by faith means trusting God no matter what happens. It means not giving up even when it's hard to follow God, to be a disciple of Jesus. I wonder who are the people who've inspired you in your life or, or perhaps in your faith? Uh, maybe it's teachers from school, if you can remember that far gone. Maybe it's friends, maybe it's family, maybe it's even the occasional church leader. Uh, you don't have to shout out their names, but I wonder who has inspired you? Who has helped you in your faith? It's important to think of them and it's important to say thank you to God for them. Uh, today, of course, we are specially saying thank you to God for Her Majesty, the Queen. But we all have our own uh, great cloud of witnesses. That's what the writer calls it in verse 1. Uh, people who've helped and supported and inspired us uh, in our faith. So let's make sure that we say thank you to God for them. Now, sadly, I, I didn't know Her Majesty. I never met her uh, or any other member of the royal family. I don't know if anyone, has anyone met the Queen? Did anyone meet the Queen? One, one or two, maybe? I think my granddad uh, met Prince Charles once. Uh, but uh, most of us, of course, have no idea what she was really like. Um, I have no idea how she felt about being the Queen. Uh, she had tremendous privilege, of course. She was, or well, no one really knows, but she was almost certainly one of the wealthiest uh, people, certainly one of the wealthiest women in the country. Uh, she lived in palaces, some of them owned by the Crown, some of them I discovered, uh, like Balmoral, she actually owns herself because Albert purchased it uh, for Victoria. She had countless staff waiting on her 
All those uh, wonderful ladies in waiting who reply to the letters that children send to Her Majesty. But her family's troubles were splashed all over the tabloids, weren't they? And she worked every single day, apparently, except Christmas Day and Easter Day. And much as I love being your vicar, I really hope I'm not still your vicar when I'm 96. (laughs) Sorry, Bobby. (laughs) I don't know how she felt about being queen. I don't know if she, I, I imagine she found it quite difficult. But what I do know is that it wasn't easy for her to be a Christian. How do I know that? Because it isn't easy for anyone to be a Christian. And that's why we need one another. I don't know if you spotted uh, in those, the, the, the end of verse 1 and the start of verse 2, the writer says, let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus. And last week, I said that the Christian life is a long walk. Today, it's a gruelling race. Uh, the point is the same. It is hard. And we can only keep going if we support one another, if we run that race together. Uh, Did you spot how the writer says, let us run with perseverance? The race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus. It's simply not possible to be a Christian by ourselves. If we try, we will, as the writer puts it at the end of verse 3, grow weary and lose heart. We won't finish the race, so let's keep going together. Now, while it's helpful to have examples of people like Her Majesty who have lived by faith and have not given up, what's most important is that we lift our eyes up. And as the writer puts it in verse 2, fix our eyes on Jesus. Consider him, verse 3. See, the cloud of witnesses is full of ordinary people who lived by faith. But the purpose of a witness is not who they are, but what they've seen, what they point to. I don't know if you like uh, sort of courtroom books or dramas on TV or films, and often there's a moment, isn't there, where the prosecuting lawyer says, and is that person in this room? And the person on the stand says, it was him, and points at the accused. I don't know if you've ever seen that. It's all rather dramatic. (laughs) Now, Jesus is not the accused in a courtroom, but he is the one that that great cloud of witnesses is pointing to. They all say, don't look at me, consider him. See, Jesus knows what it's like for us when we struggle and find things difficult. He suffered terribly. He endured the cross, verse 2, a horrific form of torture and death. And on that cross, he died. But he died, not a futile, pointless death, But he died in our place. And as he died, he defeated death, won us forgiveness and new life. And now he sits at the right hand of the throne of God. So that means Jesus is not only, as the writer puts it, the pioneer and perfecter of faith, who won through despite all his sufferings. He's also at God's side, praying for us. Cheering us on as we run the race, like we do when there's a marathon or the half marathon outside church. We're cheering everyone on. That's what Jesus is doing by the Father's side, calling us home. You may well feel unsettled at the moment. I think many of us feel that way. Uh, What's happening in our, our country, in the wider world, it's hard to make sense of some of it. If you feel, maybe you feel sad or or lost. Restless. It's uneasy. If you feel like that, you're definitely not alone. This world is all shifting sand and uh, moving goalposts and (coughs) insert cliche here. The only solid ground, the only rock on which we can stand firm is Jesus Christ. And the writer says, not a few verses after this, in chapter 13, verse 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And that's why that great cloud of witnesses point not to themselves, but to Jesus. They point to him. The TV and newspapers, of course, are full of Her Majesty's long duty and service 
to her country, and rightly so. I give thanks for that, uh, for all that she has stood for on her long reign. But even more than that, I give thanks to God that she bore witness to her king, the one who is king of all queens and all kings on earth, the one whose reign will never end. Thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Jesus' reign will never end. So friends, please listen to that great cloud of witnesses. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. Let us keep going, but together, not trying to go it alone, but standing firm alongside each other. Let us give thanks for those who've gone before, who've helped and supported us on our faith. And let us look forward to that joy that is set before us when we reach our Saviour and he says, welcome home.